In this video, I'll be talking about a geometrical understanding of the trigonometric functions, and I'll briefly talk about where the names of sine, cosine, and tangent come from. To show this geometrical understanding, I'll be using these two right angle triangles here. And I've written here, what is the relationship between X, Y, and Z? So these lengths, and I don't want to use the trig ratios because I want to show that relationship. So I don't want to use them in my proof. So looking at these two right angle triangles, what do you notice? Maybe pause the video here and write a few things down. The main thing is, and really the key to this relationship, is that these two right angle triangles are similar. And we can show that using the angles. So if we look at this angle in here, call that theta, then this angle up here in this orange right angle triangle would be 90 take theta, because angles in a triangle add up to 180. And also this angle over here in the blue right angle triangle will also be 90 take theta. So all of the angles in these two right angle triangles are the same. So then therefore we have similar triangles. So let's firstly write that down, similar triangles, because all of the angles are the same and we abbreviate that to AAA. Then we can use the fact that sides in similar triangles are in the same ratio to find this relationship. So looking at the legs of these two right angle triangles, the legs of the larger one are one and Z. They will be in the same ratio as the legs of the smaller orange right angle triangle X and Y. And to make sure we get them in the right order, we need to know which side Z relates to. So this is adjacent to this angle 90 take theta, the same as Y is adjacent to 90 take theta in the smaller right angle triangle. So Z and Y will be related. So this ratio Z over one will be the same as the ratio Y over X because they are similar triangles. Z over one, we could just write as Z. So Z equals Y over X. So we have our relationship now, Z equals Y over X. And this is one way to think about the trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. If we look at a right angle triangle with a hypotenuse of one, the this leg opposite the angle you're thinking about, so theta in this case, this side has a length of sine theta. X is cosine theta and Z is tan theta. And we've just shown that Z equals Y over X, so therefore tan theta equals sine over cosine. Now you might be asking why have I called these sine, cosine, and tan theta? Well, that's where the names actually come from. Sine comes originally from a Sanskrit word meaning half a chord. So these two right angle triangles actually relate to a unit circle. Uh, a unit circle is a circle with radius one. And I'm going to pull up a diagram to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, here is what we call a unit circle because it has a radius of one. And in here are those two right angle triangles we were just working with. Now there's a few other things around here. I'll get to that in a second, but I just wanna focus on these two right angle triangles. This is what we originally called Y. This is what we called X. And this is what we called Z here. And now I've labeled them sine theta, cosine theta, and tan theta. We use the unit circle because it's a way of representing every single right angle triangle with any angles within it. So as we move this radius around the circle, we create all the different right angle triangles. And this relationship still holds. We still have sine theta, cosine theta, and tan theta equaling sine theta over cosine theta. As we just proved using theta as the angle, meaning we proved it for any angle. And this is the reason it's called the tangent because we know that the tangent is 90 degrees to the radius of the circle. So this line then must be the tangent to this circle. Therefore, that's where it gets its name from. And we just proved it equals sine theta over cosine theta geometrically. So that is how I like to understand, or one of the ways I like to understand the tangent function, because it gives it kind of a concreteness or a, a geometrical understanding, as opposed to the way of understanding it through ratios, etc. If you're like me and you like thinking about these things geometrically, maybe that helps you understand these things better. The other thing I wanted to point out are these other functions. So for example, secant. Secant means to cut through. So this is the line cutting through the circle. That's where secant comes from. Cotangent, similar to cosine next to the tangent or working with the tangent. And cosecant, similar to cosine and cotangent next to the secant. And you can understand 
their, uh, their identities as well. Similarly, geometrically, as we just did with those first two right angle triangles. Okay, so there you go. That is a geometrical understanding of those trigonometric functions and also briefly where their names come from. I hope you found that useful. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more content and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.